He missed. Welcome back to the 4A Baseball Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. We are recording on Thursday, February 9th. I am excited to get back into it. We've taken a little bit of a break from recording these, and we're back pumping out the ends of our power rankings, and we are heading to center field today, the most promising defensive position in all of baseball, maybe besides catcher. Uh, no big real news over the past week and a half besides you, Darvish, extension today. Darvish. But other than that, the we rosters, got World Baseball the Classic rosters right rosters. Uh, we're going to break that down in a week or two. I'm really excited for the World Baseball Classic. How are we doing today, boys? I am. I have no idea what this list is going to I think this is going to be the most controversial one we've had so far because I, I genuinely – that was – I mean, this is reaching second base levels of – we are going to hit the fan really fast. Uh, left field, I think, is honestly left field was a little easier in my opinion. Left field was pretty tough, though. Yeah, it was tough, but I think I think it'll be a little less controversial than this one. I think with left field and right field, there are guys that are like punching their ticket for ten. This one, where we're like trying to find a number bad. nine and a number ten. Yeah. Um. I would like to clarify, uh, this is the least confident in any list that I have been. Um, so I would just like to head to our honorable mentions first and see how bad my list is. Yeah. Um, Stev, why don't you kick us off? All right. Well, I have four honorable mentions. I want to talk, I'm going to go first with Harrison Bader. I think, I mean, I really like him. His percentiles are pretty good, um, but he played 86 games he i don't think he's ever played over like 95 games in a total season like i just need him to be out on the field more 250 average is pretty good but an 86 wrc plus and a 650 ops is not very good plays pretty good defense if he can stay on the field consistently he definitely would have cracked the top 10 but that's not really saying a lot yeah he would have been top 10 based on his 2021 which is like i guess in his terms like a breakout but yeah you know what? He kind of showing signs of life in the Yankees postseason. And if he's in New York where he's from and he's on the positive side of the Yankees fan base, I think there's definitely potential for growth with him. Uh, emphasis on the positive side of the Yankees fan base. It's just a matter of whether or not his 2022 injuries what held him back or if he felt the effects of negative regression. I don't know. I mean, he's kind of proven to be an above average bat the last two seasons. I mean, he's shown these flashes of absolute elite hitting. Um, he is a streaky hitter, though. Um, but the fact that he's been one of the most defensive, uh, the, one of the best defensive center fielders since he came up in what, 2017. Um, I mean, if, if that bat comes in, he's going to be top 10 for sure. It just hasn't really shown yet for at least a consistent period of time. He's a very streaky hitter. Hasn't really played a full season in about two, three years. I think, um, he had two months in 2021. Uh, and I, I looked at his splits over the months because he is a very streaky batter. And he had two months where he hovered around that 1,000 OPS range. And then he went down to earth and heated back up. We saw him in the postseason in uh, 1262 OPS, hitting five home runs in nine games last season. Uh, clearly does not fold under pressure. I mean, playing in the postseason in New York is probably one of the hardest things to do mentally. Um, so given a healthy season, I don't see why he shouldn't be in the um, the top 10 conversation by the end of the season. I like that. And yes, Tom, you. what about you? I mean, Harrison Bader was my only honorable mention. I was, oh. I was, at, I was at ten and eleven, um, and Harrison Bader was on my ten at one point, and then he dropped down to eleven. Uh, Brad, I, haven't, you at? I haven't entered Dodgers bias here. Oh uh, God! But it's know. just Trace Thompson. If he yeah. he'd be top ten if he wasn't a platoon bat. Uh, his best season was clearly twenty twenty. He strikes out so much. <laughs> he strikes out a ton. Uh, he's not going to be the center fielder in twenty twenty three, and that kind of that kind of hurts. He's going to split time with a rookie. And it's going to be another platoon bat hits the ball. Well, it's just, he's a platoon bat and platoon bats really aren't in the top 10 unless they're insane at what they do. Yep. Uh, I mean, um, yeah. I, I, I like, I like Trace Thompson. He was my last cut of my honorable mentions when I was going through, I, I literally, but I honestly really don't know where to place this guy because he's a very good hitter. He's just not going to be an everyday type of guy. Yeah. Um. Uh, and his defense isn't the best. Yeah. And three outs He's above pretty average. fast. He's quick. It's just, you know, even though like some people grade out well, when you watch them play defense, you're always kind of shaky whenever a ball is hit to them. That's how I yeah, felt watching fair. Trace Thompson. Yeah. Um, I also had Dylan Carlson as an honorable mention. It feels like forever he's been supposed, he's supposed to be a prospect. Uh, he kind of showed it in 2021, but he took a big step back. 
but his big step back was was a league average bat. Um, and he was an above average wins above replacement player. So that's good. Uh, great glove, decent bat. The summary of center fielders in Major League Baseball right now, except for the Elliott. Yeah, I think I think this guy is definitely there's a lot of these center fielders that were either failed prospects or, you know, guys that we're going to talk about later that were the number one prospect for like six years and then finally became good and then get injured all the time. I'm hinting at it, but, that you know, there's a lot of guys on this list that are like that. And I, I, I this guy is what is he, 24 or something? 20, 24, he's 24. Yeah, he's yeah. very young. So he's going to he's going to have time to grow. Uh, obviously, he already has the defense. I think the bat's going to come later. Definitely like that. Uh, staying on the young train, I want to talk about Riley Green. Um, I think he can take a big step forward. Um, in Detroit, and I think he will take the big step forward. So I could see him possibly cracking the top ten by midseason or season's end. But that's really my only reason I have him as an honorable mention. Uh, and then I'll get into my next one, which is Trent Grisham. Uh, if he was a league average bat, I would have easily put him on this list. He is a very, very good defender, but he batted 184 with a 83 WRC plus and a 629 o- or 626 OPS. That's not good by any stretch of the imagination. Brad hates any Padre, uh, and Tom hates every uh, NL West team. So uh, it's just I I want I I also just hate Trent Grisham in general, but I need to give him an honorable mention. Why would you? He's the Nats MVP, man. He's the only reason I, they won the World Series. <laughs> Like, I I just I hate Trent Grisham. I hate the way he plays. And when he made that error, it gave gave me the biggest smile on my face. I mean, it did I, kind I, of send your team to the next round, like the first yeah, series they've like ever won. Literally, quite literally, the only the only reason you guys made it, yeah. which is also supplied to one of the greatest moments in history, though. So I, uh, I will, I will it, say, very enjoyable. Wouldn't have, wouldn't that have tied it? It would have tied it without it. We went up. No, I'm sure no we went up two in that game. We went up by two. That gave you the lead. Game. It was what was it? Was it three one? It, it no, it, it three, was. Two, I don't. I don't remember. Brad's looking it up. Brewers versus Nationals, twenty nineteen wild card. That was peak, man. I mean, it, they won four to three the Nats, and they scored three on that, so it would have made it four to two or three to two Brewers if yeah. it was fielded. It was fielded cleanly. So I mean, this is a guy who adds tremendous value to the other team. So I, I don't think he makes that, that honorable mentions. Um, but with Riley green, Brad, you didn't give a very supportive look, but I think this guy is about a league average bat as a rookie who also walks above average strikes out a lot. That's a rookie mistake, but like he has an above average glove too. You're looking at about an average player with an above average glove and decent speed as, as a rookie. That's something that you, that has the potential to become a, like a five tool player. You know, when you're okay, at, when you're good at everything, not great at everything, but just good. I think he has room to grow, um, and I think maybe with the new fences um, at at the I think that's going to help a help. lot in Detroit. Yeah, I think that I'm not going to give it to him because he's a rookie who hasn't proven it yet. Um, he played 93 games and only put a .9 WAR. That puts him on pace for what 1.6 WAR over 162 games. He also has like, an incredibly high ground ball percentage at 56.8. Yeah, like I am not the most impressed with what I've seen. And I can't put someone with a really bad track record. If he say he had a fantastic 93 game sample, different question. Like I have him in our much. It's probably in the top 10 because again, isn't a deep position. It's just I he hasn't proven it and he can't. I don't forecast people into my top 10 or honorable mentions. I take them as what they are. I, I agree. I, I think, I think we're, we're becoming too linear. Le- like we're becoming too easily the, getting into the honorable mentions is too easy. If Trent Grisham and Riley green are making the honorable mentions, then it's more of like a, just, I mean, that's list. just that, that goes to person to person. I think Trent Grisham, if he was a league average bat is in the list easily. That's what yeah. I was trying to say. So just, that he's an honorable mention if he has a league average bet, which he doesn't. That's yeah. what I was saying. And Riley Green, I put him in there just because I see him being in the top 10 by midseason to season's end. All right. So, uh, does someone want to kick off with our number 10? Quick cut, quick cut. Okay. Dude, the fucking draft, I can't change it. It's stuck. Like it, it was not, it was, it's not moving. So are we going to have to just make another fucking league? <laughs> Probably, I guess so. That's fine. Cause I, we can. Do yeah, because we we talked about we talked about um recording this night, and then Aiden couldn't do it, and then I was in class, so 
I changed the time to a time that we, we all could do and then Aiden bailed. So um, well, let's just see. we should time. still play the fantasy league with just the randomly assigned players. We can play two. We can rent two. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um all right, ready? I have one more album mention, so okay. Steps, you have one more album mention you want to talk about? Uh yeah, I do. Um, and I think this will be a good segue into our actual top ten. Um, but it's Jazz Chisholm. Uh offensively, he is easily in the top ten, probably in that nine or ten slot. Um, but he only played 60 games last season, and we don't know how he will play defensively um in in center field. And I on a center field list, I can't justify putting someone in that has never played the position before we talk about it kind of like he's kind of it's basically he's a rookie for center fielders is kind of how i'm looking at it right also you want to talk about his arm strength it is not very good last season he was in the 23rd percentile of arm strength i I just i can't justify i can i'll be okay if you guys have him on your list but i personally cannot do that no tom i want to hear i want to hear what you're at on this because i'm curious i have him at number 10 but okay. I don't like having him at number 10. You think it's too low or too high? It's too on the list. It just feels like there's think, no I... one else. The thing is, okay, here's the issue. He only played 60 games last year, and when he played a lot of games in 2021, he wasn't good. Like, hmm. we can't, like, pretend that he was, like, very, very good in 2021. He was starting to break out in 2022, but he didn't continue the breakout like he had a very very good april he had a uh, 1.011 ops and it fell off the face of the earth in may and kind of recovered in june but he got hurt and we didn't see what that season was it's just i'm taking it probably a lot based on the fact he is the mlb the show cover and a lot of people believe in him to continue that breakout um but We've never seen his defensive value in center field. And as Steps points out, his arm is atrocious, even when he was at second base. So that doesn't bode well for center field, especially in Miami with a really big center field. Yeah, I mean, Jazz is a guy, I mean, he's got, he's in the 94th percentile for instant speed. So I really, I really am not too worried about him, you know, tracking down fly balls. I think he is someone that will work for it. I mean, he seemed to be pretty excited that he's moving to center too. I... I'm not too worried about the defense. And I, I, the only thing I'm worried about is his injury. Um, I don't know what the injury is, but if it was enough to keep him out for the entire season, what what was it? Um, if, I don't remember exactly. I'm pulling it up real quick. Uh, I mean, if you, if you weigh it, if you want, if you average like a 162 game average, obviously you won't keep that up the whole season, but he was on pace for a 30, back 30 season. Pain, something back related. I mean, back is very concerning, especially for young players. I mean, you would know. Backs in general. Yeah, I would know. Trust me. God, my back always hurts. Um, I, I think Jazz has a lot of power upside. I don't think he's ever going to be a guy that hits for like high average, but I think he might be a 30 30 guy, hits for low, with low average, high power. Um, I'm curious how he makes the adjustment in center field. I feel like this 10 is the ceiling you can put him at just because he has not played the position before and that he hasn't played much baseball at all. God, I'm what conflicted think, now on my 9, 10, 11. Man, I, I don't know. I mean, what... I, I don't have a specific guy on my list that I think should be on the list. I think he should be there more than Jazz Chisholm, but I don't know if he should be there more than the next guy. But I don't know if the next guy should be on the list at all. Okay, well, well, let, let, what, was it an honorable? Was it your honorable mention that you mentioned? Or no, I haven't even mentioned, mentioned, mentioned. I haven't mentioned this guy. He at hasn't all. mentioned and his, and he's not even on the list. So if he's not on the he, list, he, you didn't mention him. He's an honorable mention. He just Brad didn't get to that one yet. Okay, Brad, who was that? I don't want to get to it because I think he's on your guys' list. Oh Steph, man, he's your number ten, Mike Kuszczemski. Okay, why? Okay, uh, okay, sorry. Uh, I I thought we were just going. Okay, uh, Mike Kuszczemski. I mean, he's a pretty good uh, player. He's a pretty consistent player across the league and. Again, offensively, I cannot justify having him in over Jazz Chisholm, but he was above average defense in center field. Uh, he hits with 214 average, 99 a WRC plus, and a 697 OPS. Those aren't very good statistics. I'm not even going to lie about it. But he deserves to be in there because he's played there consistently. He played 148 games last season. He's played there consistently throughout m- the majority of his career, right? So I can't justify putting Jazz in over him. So 
that's a good that's a good segue into my number nine, which is also Mike Yastrzemski. I I your ten. My ten was, was jazz. jazz. We talked about that was jazz. jazz. Okay. Mike Yastrzemski has developed a walk tool after not being much of a walker. That's not even a term. Got you know he doesn't he did he wasn't a guy that would consistently walk. Actually, twenty twenty was kind of an out there year, but that was also a very short season. Um, you look back at his his twenty twenty season, even his twenty twenty one season, he was hitting for power, um, and he's not just good in the field. He he makes very flashy plays. I mean, obviously, I watched the Giants more than you guys, but he is very flashy sure. out there. Covers a lot more ground than you'd think for the forty second percentile in sprint speed. He is very good out there in center field, and I honestly think. If you look at his expected stats compared to his regular stats, they are not exceeding. So it, all signs are pointing to the fact that he will show some positive regression next season. Um, being top, sec, top 6% in WOBA in 2020 is kind of crazy. Obviously, that did exceed the expected WOBA by quite a little bit. But I, I think Mike Yastrzemski has the tools, has the power. Obviously, hitting at Oracle is not that easy to hit for power, especially as left-handed batter, uh, considering how far that right field fence is or how far the triples alley goes. But this is a guy that gets it to all parts of the field, hits for power, does not hit for average, but has a great glove out there. And I think there's only one way he can go from here, and I think it's up. I need to disagree with you all. Okay. It's not going to help with who my number nine is. Oh, God. But in 2022, I without looking, just looking at me, eye contact okay. here. I'm looking at you. Yep. He started 125 of 144 games. Of that, how many games did he actually start in center field? I don't know. Probably would, not a lot. Only uh, 74. Last season? Yeah, he only started 74 games. Oh, he in only started. Field. Okay. So, evidently, he's not overly qualified to... I mean, there's not much of an argument to say... I think it was Stebs, you pointed out that he's, like, proven to be there. He played barely half of his games there last year. And his he's defense, it was proven okay. it more than Jazz. He's proven it more than Jazz. Okay, that's fair. I mean, I, when that, you I I'm not I with with Harrison with Harrison Bader Riley Green and Trent Grisham, n- none of them matter. Yeah, it's it's Jazz Jazz Mike and the next guy that I will I'll get to. But my number nine, I can't Kevin I can't Kiermaier. What in the world? I can't. I oh can't do that. my goodness! He is oh, the no. best defensive I, player of Statcast I, history. Oh man, that that's pretty. Bad. I. I I I like the pick, but I don't like the pick because he didn't play a lot last season, and we don't know how he's going to play in Toronto. I like the pick from from what he has done throughout his entire career, but based off of last season, I couldn't do it. He has a career I, expected woba of two ninety six. Again, but Stevs literally just pointed out Trent Grisham hit for two hundred. He'd be a top ten center fielder in baseball. I, I know, but but Trent based, Grisham has shown on, signs. Based on Trent Grisham has shown signs of offense. Kevin Kiermaier in but his Kevin Kiermaier, okay. career, he's put up four of showed. nine. Four of nine seasons, he's been above league average. He averages out, I believe, just right below league average, and in he's what? like a ninety-seven WRC plus for his career. It is if you if you it is oh. a ninety-seven career WRC plus. He's consistently putting up or when healthy. 2.5 plus war because of how fantastic his defense is. There is no arguing how good of a defensive player Kevin Kiermeyer is. He's proven it time and time again. He's getting the Blue Jays literally picked him up for his defensive value in center field. Like you don't do that with just Joe Random. You do that with a guy who's proven it year in and year out by putting up 13 outs above average, 13 outs above average, 19 outs above average, 12 in 2021 when he was healthy. And center field is a heavily defensive position where you can see guys like Cody Bellinger playing for a really, really good team like the Dodgers and not hitting at all and still getting to play every day because of how good his defense was. And you can value the, Kevin Kiermaier like the that. Only, the only thing that does surprise me is that somehow, somehow Kevin Kiermaier pulled in MVP votes in 20, 2015. I, I did not know solely that. solely based on his defense. Solely based on the defense because he won a gold glove that season. But in his career, he's only had three gold gloves. That's not saying that much because the voting is a little weird. Um, a bit of an under the radar. I think now he's just finally getting his attention. He has an OPS plus around 98, so he's about league average hitter. But another thing is, Brad, we're talking about games here. He's played over 130 games once in his career. He he really does – like, I don't know if he's a platoon guy or if he just doesn't – he gets hurt I mean, a lot. He probably did get platooned with everything. the Rays. Um, yeah, I mean, that's just like, Rays. Okay, think like, about that. In only half – the minimal amount of games, 
Look at how crazy his outs above average were. They were insane. Ah, uh, I uh, I'm not upset about the pick based on what he's done throughout his entire career. I just I personally did not go that route. I just he doesn't okay. get on base. I just walk. wanted to clarify the guy that I might be appending in a little bit to go okay. take over Jazz Chisholm at ten, and that's Adam Duvall. And Adam Duvall is a 2021 based argument because of how freaking good he was. He was a gold glove outfielder. And he's kind of got the Stev metrics looking to him, but he was like, even when he didn't have a wrist, he was a great defender, but his signs of life fail, failed pretty much when he required season ending wrist surgery. I don't know if I'm going to append him, but he makes a fair argument for jazz jazz and who's never shown up in the outfield before. Yeah. I mean, 2022, obviously battling injury. Um, he's a guy with, alarmingly uh, low walk rate to an alarmingly high strikeout rate, uh, which is a bit of a red flag. But um, And he's had some very bad seasons, but twenty this stretch from 2019 pretty much to 2021 was, I mean, a good hitter. Um, I don't know. I never considered Adam Duvall a, a really good glove until now. I don't know. I never considered sure, him that's fast. Why. I thought he was slow, but he's, he's always in the top percentiles in speed. That's kind of surprising to me. And he's um, in Fenway. Yeah, that's that why that's why the, the Red Sox that. went out and got him. Yeah, I think so. the Red Sox quietly had a decent off season. I, I'm not. That's a story. For I think they still fifth in the in the East. I think they no. patched holes yes. as opposed to improving. Yeah, I, I, that's the conversation for when we when we do our our preseason, obviously. But um, I, I think Adam Duvall it should have been on my honorable mentions. I did not realize how how defensively focused he was. I thought he was kind of like a all bat, no glove type of like DH batter, but he is not. Um, obviously, the, he he's a pure hitter. He doesn't walk, strikes out a lot, swings and misses a lot, chases a lot, but he's a pure hitter in the sense that when he makes contact, it goes very far, and he hits the ball a lot. So I I could see why that makes sense. He's always going to be low batting average, but Adam Duvall, he might actually be like my eleven. I think he's he's up there. Stevs, what do you think? What Stev metrics are you using to say he's good by Stev uh, metrics? Home because run he's and not RBI. by Stev metrics. Home run okay, and those RBI. are fair. But by by averages, he's terrible. Okay. He had a 213 average, average 87 WRC. He was above plus, league 677 average. 677 OPS. 278 Babbitt. Like 2021. Not... Okay, that's fair. But last season, I'm looking at last season's stats. And that's what I heavily base my decisions off of. Well, you can't or do that when the guy had half of a wrist. Get better wrists. He did. What that's does, why he missed the rest of the season. <laughs> <laughs> what does surprise me is that this guy has 18 career stolen bases in nine seasons. I I mean, that that's why I thought he was slow. He just doesn't steal bases. I don't yeah. know if they just don't use them. But I mean, stolen I, the, the whole league has gone away from stolen bases, which is a crime, but I think Adam Duvall is a good sleeper pick. Uh, I, I I do like it. I think it's a very good underrated. Uh, because what MLB just uh posted their all ML or all underrated team. I think I think he would deserve to be on the list. Stevs, who do you have at number nine? I again, I'm going for players that are consistent, and I went with Jazz McCormick. Um, I I like. Um, I I I like what he brings to the table. He plays pretty well he's on houston so that gives him a bump already a 245 average with a 114 wrc plus is pretty good 738 ops um his okay. percentiles are pretty mixed um i'll give you that um but he had plays very very good defense especially in houston um and i i just i like what he brings to the table uh, i and it's got good again, defense huh He's got good defense. He's got good defense. I, I just – I'm a little concerned that he has positive run value versus virtually only four seamers, and he cannot hit the off speed. But um, I don't know yes. if that's something that, that – that's a little bit concerning to me. I mean, this is also that's kind fair. of uh, – is, is this a younger guy? He has a high walk rate, that, too. Chaz. Yeah. He's, he's 27. So he's, he's just a late, late bloomer. Season. Is he a right-hander? Yeah. That yeah. is a weird split. He so he has more home runs to the opposite field than he does pull home runs. Um, well, Houston. 
That is true. Yeah. But the box, the little box out in yeah. Um, um I don't know. I, I, I oh man, this is a weird episode. I I'm so I know. we said it. We did say he, it coming in. Okay. He also had seven home runs on the road and seven home runs at home. I, I like Chaz McCormick. I think he's a good all around player and in a list that really has no nine or ten, I think a good consistent player is what I wanted, and that's what I went with. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I mean he's fair. he's he's very versatile. I mean he can play all three outfield positions pretty effectively. I mean he's never had a negative. And I think he had a good him. split. He played left field sixty four games, center field sixteen, right field seventeen, and he DH'd his other. And he is going to get the starting position in Houston, so he is. All right. I'm not yeah, I mean, I'm uh, not heinous about that. You know, you came to the table, Stevs, and you, you provided some good reasoning. I, I feel like I feel like in a team like the Astros, a guy like Chas McCormick gets overshadowed heavily. So I, I I I'm not completely against it. Brad, bring us into number eight. I, this okay, is, this I think we should be entering this the is when, consensus yeah. top eight. Yes, I have yes. Luis Robert because like he. Where am I scrolling down? Uh, he's never had the full breakout we've been waiting for. Uh, the power is evidently there. He can his max exit velo is one hundred seventeen point eight miles per hour, which is that's pretty good. He doesn't walk nearly at all. Uh, he whiffs a ton along with a horrible chase rate. And when it, when he makes contact, it's actually only slightly above average normally. And he also needs to stay healthy because the most games he's ever played is a whopping in ninety eight games. That is not enough. I think yeah. the prospect's still in there. It's just it hasn't come out yet. Yeah, I'll be talking about him in a minute. I mean, like, literally just a minute. But, um, Stevs, who's your number eight? Who's your guy? I had Cedric Mullins. Um, I – so, for me, it, it was it was him, Robert, and then another guy that we'll get to in a second for this – in this range. Um, But Cedric is worse in – every Stev metric and in every Brad metric or in most Brad metrics than Luis Robert was. Again, I do get the injury concerns and stuff like that. Um, he Cedric plays much better defense though, which is something that I, I almost put Mullins in over Robert, but overall, I think I would rather, I, I think I'd rather have Cedric Mullins in my outfield, but I think Luis Robert will have a better season, especially since I do think the White Sox are going to go through a culture change. And I think that's going to help and elevate him to the next level. I'm right there with you. I, I think Cedric belongs in this spot. Um, obviously, we saw some pretty heavy regression last season. Um, but just keep in mind, this is the last guy to hit for a 33 season in the MLB. And it is surprising to say that because you wouldn't think of this guy as a power hitter. I mean, what did he finish in MVP voting last year? I think it was, it was nine, like seven yeah, last year or two years ago. Two years ago. Sorry. 2021 was one of the, one of the better seasons I've seen from an outfielder. I mean, it's very underrated in my opinion. I mean, going for 30, 30 seasons. And since then, I mean, even last season, I was trying to look at the launch angles to see kind of what happened. Um, Nothing much has changed. I don't know what happened. Uh, I think he played a couple less games, but he's always going to be a hit machine. I mean, this season and last season, he hit 157 hits, top 20 will be for that. Uh, he stole 34 bases. He's still stealing at a high level. Um, And I'm not sure about the glove. Let's see the glove. Hold on. Obviously, covers a lot of ground out there. So Cedric's really... glove is fantastic. Yeah, so yes. you're getting a very complete player. I mean, 2021 had 10 outs above average in just center field alone. So he, he was in the 96 percentile last season. So I mean, this is a guy. Who, if he can get some of that pop back that he's that we saw in 2021, obviously he's going to get MVP votes. I mean, this is this is a guy with a lot of upside, and this is also one last thing before Steps goes. Someone who who will also benefit from a shift ban because he does pull a lot of baseballs. That's fair. Um, I also think with the Orioles getting better and only like going into trying to compete yet again, I think that will only help him and get him to get higher on this list. I, I mean, if we haven't figured that out, I have him at seven, uh, right <laughs> above Luis Robert. Um, I took this from Luis Robert's league average offense. I uh, posted what two point one F four compared to Cedric Mullins three point four F four based on how good his defense was. Uh, his high speed allows him to have an extreme range, which is really, really beneficial to an Orioles pitching staff that doesn't really strike out too many batters once and the starting rotation, at least. Um, obviously, he had a huge offensive step back, as you guys mentioned. 
his walks and strikeouts actually were relatively the same. It's just he really stopped barreling the ball. He barreled it at half the rate. And he was an above average hitter with 34 stolen bases. So I like Cedric Mullins. I think honestly taken at face value right now, I think Cedric Mullins is just better than Luis Robert. And a lot of it has to do with the fact he's on the Orioles who are a lot better player development and have a better culture than the White Sox. Yeah. I I think it's not shocking to hear that my number seven is Luis Robert. Um, I know uh, I really hope Steph is on the same page as me, but I, I know this is kind of a bad metric because obviously, but this is what I try to do when I see injury prone players. This is a guy with a 162 game average of 26 home runs, 35 doubles and 181 hits. And we can't forget that he has an elite glove, elite speed, elite arm strength. Um, Like Brad said, he hasn't played over a hundred games in a season, his entire career. And that's kind of a pretty common theme amongst these guys in center field, obviously struggling to stay healthy. I'd, I'd literally imagine him in the top three if he could produce those 162 game averages while also providing glove in the outfield. He just can't stay healthy. I am still on the hype train for this guy. I've loved him since he came up. Um, you can't forget how long he was a top prospect for. He was up there for so long. And I think if you get a full season out, out of him, he's going to be a very – he's going to see a big breakout. I don't know if everyone's hip to Luis Robert and how good his bat is and how good his glove is. He's very complete. So I, if you can get a full season out of that, He's just he's just someone that we're looking to see a, a full season from. Uh, I'm right there with Tom. I had Robert coming next. Um, the injury again is an issue, but I think with the whole culture change in Chicago, hopefully that will help rejuvenate him and put him back on the field more more often. He batted to a 284 average in those 98 games last year and a 111 WRC plus. Um, he gets the crap out of the ball uh 98 99th percentile and max exit velocity last year um i think he is he has the upside to be top five it's just a matter of can he put it together for an entire season which is uh questionable to say the least all right i'm curious you guys have at number six this is gonna be controversial because i know this is gonna this is gonna anger you guys um i had michael harris uh at six um this is another 30 30 threat out here in center field we have a lot of those guys now um he's not even really close to the other rookie of the year center fielder but that's not to say his 2022 season wasn't incredible um one red flag is the high strikeout to low walk ratio but his other tools are so good that it might actually cancel out gets the ball to all parts of the yard um only concern revolves around the player approach high whiff rate chases balls outside the zone um, but that's kind of what you expect with a young star in the making. I expect him to make those adjustments as he matures, but that glove is crazy. He's got good speed. He has the makings of a five tool player. I just needed to see another season. And I hope that regression doesn't come and hit him because of those red flags I mentioned. Steve. Don't say it. This one might, I think Tom knows who I'm going to go with. I, I went with Brian Reynolds here. <laughs> um, I, he had a really he had a really big step backwards from his 2021 season, uh, especially defensively. That was that was my big thing, right? Like he goes, he was he was in the he was negative seven outs above average last year, and what was he in 2021? He was 11. 11. Like that is a that is a major step backwards defensively. Bet to 262 average, 125 WRC plus, and an 807 OPS. It's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. It's just I think I want more from my number five center fielder. I also have Brian Reynolds at number no! six. Because Dude. his defense was so bad this year. Why but do we do we know do, do you know why? I mean like, I was could there look in, I could look I, into it and figure I it can, out. I can I the only reason I can assume is because he wanted to get traded and he wanted to stay healthy, so he wasn't being as aggressive out on the field. A lot of guys, you see some regression defensively because they are not going for balls. They're not. I you think know there was just overall regression because his 141 WRC plus was with a higher league average run scoring environment. And his run his weighted runs created plus got worse by 16 points with a worse league average run scoring environment. He had 2.9 F4. And obviously, if this is what Brian Reynolds is, then it's great. A 20% above league average bat. We'll call it an average center fielder defensively. He has a ton of value. And you know what he'd be really nice on right now? The, the San Dodge Francisco Giants. Giants because the they Giants. traded him for Andrew McCutcheon. Are you serious? Yes. 
Didn't happen. Didn't happen. It False. happened. And he so, was oh part of the package for the Andrew McCutcheon God. deal back in You traded Jordan Alvarez. Literally, you traded you traded Jordan Alvarez. Hey Tom, Tom, how's your how's your uh, house developed stars doing these past five years? Nope. Nope. Oh nope. my god. I had no clue that, that that was part of the deal. You wait for your stars to that. blossom before trading them away, okay? I don't want to hear it from you. We trade before they blossom. Me and Brad That's are on worse. Different. We traded your Don. You, you Brad traded, traded for Andrew traded. McCutcheon. He was a dog on our team, baby. He was so good. Not really. No, he wasn't. Okay. He, he's a, he's he a, barely baby. realized that there was a fight happening in front of him. That's okay. Oh man. That hurts, Brad. Um, now, guess I, guess guess where McCutcheon is. He's back on the freaking Pirates. It's like a so lose lose trade. Brian Reynolds, Brian Reynolds you, you can't you can't look at his defensive career numbers and tell me this wasn't a fluke. I I truly believe this is a fluke season. He has everything that a defensive center fielder needs. It just didn't come together last season, and I think it's because he was trying to preserve his health out in the and that that is that is a real thing. It does happen. You see players in their either walk seasons or when they expect to be traded, which I, I think Brian Reynolds is now starting to expect to be traded. Like Bryce Harper, in his season before he got tra- before he reached free agency, he was not going for baseballs. Uh, I think he was not really – not really very aggressive. I have Brian Reynolds a five, okay? I, Brian Reynolds, I think he sees me in the stands whenever I'm at a game, and he just goes nuts. So I'm a little biased. I love Brian Reynolds, dude. He's a switch hitting center fielder, good glove. Um. But Brad, I want to talk about the offensive numbers because, to be completely honest, I, Brian Reynolds and the year. Let's just weigh this in here. He didn't look like Brian Reynolds until June last season. From then on, he was back to his all-star form. Look at his splits. No, the first two months were, along with an injury in July, it kind of blocks out how good he really was. Um, in his rookie year, he hit three fourteen with thirty-seven doubles, sixteen home runs. Those are those metrics, but that is still very good. Disappeared in twenty twenty, along with a lot of players. Uh, Brad, you know, you know a guy. Actually, no, wait, never mind. Uh, uh, anyways, came back in 2021, arguably one of the best players in baseball, finished 11th in MVP voting. The 2021 season was sick. Um, and even in a down season, like I mentioned, uh, because of the slow start and the injuries, still an OPS plus at 126, which makes him, like Brad said, about 20% better, 25% better than the league. You know what I'm saying? He'll be back, and he's coming for the people in the top five. He is so good. I'm telling you. I mean, you look at the splits. They're undeniable. He was Brian Reynolds for the second half of the season, or at least before he got injured again. And, you know, I, I, he's very good. Um, and he's complete, too. He's not one-dimensional. He has the tools. He's going to put it back together. And as we've seen, there's these weird little stretches. So we got 2019, great season. 2020, awful season. Horrible. 2021, all-star. One of the best seasons that we've seen from – the best season we've seen from. 2022, a little bit of down season. If he keeps the trend going, he should be back to that MVP uh, top 10 finish uh, next season. And I, I believe he will be. And I believe he'll be traded as well. But that's another conversation. I would just like to go back to my previous statement. In okay. January of 2018, Andrew McCutcheon no! was traded from the Pirates no, to no, the no, Giants no. in exchange for Kyle Crick, Brian Reynolds, and international bonus slot money. He would be a Giant for only seven months before being dealt to the Yankees. And in his time with the Giants, he would only post 1.6 war where he would go to the Yankees and play a sixth of the games he played with the Giants and post 0.9 war. <clears throat> Alvarez received a two million signing bonus from the Dodgers and was traded two weeks later to the Houston Astros in exchange for Josh Fields. Do you know hmm. a guy named Josh Fields? Will actually, I do. He was a reliever for a couple of years. Okay. Uh, let's see, Clayton Kershaw, Julio no! Arias, no, 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 Walker no. Bueller, Will Smith Bueller. again. To be He's completely so fair, though, Brian Reynolds is a lot worse than Jordan Alvarez. So I think Tom gets the one up on that. But I think it's you get the one up the on the Dodgers just being better. Guy. Anyways, yeah, at do- number five. You, are I you had... wait? Hold on, hold on. Are you really saying the Dodgers could not have developed Jordan Alvarez? I think they would have pulled. I think they would have like held his hand into the major leagues. Okay, that's fine. Uh, um, I number five. I have Michael Harris. I think he's a really, really good defensive center fielder. He's supposed to become the second coming of Andrew Jones, and he flew through the minor leagues. He didn't even play in AAA I and mean, put up four point eight F four in one hundred fourteen games. That's pretty good. He didn't walk at all though. He struck out really high. And he had great defense, like emphasis on the great defense. It's just, I think the guys above him are better. And if he can continue where he left off, Michael Harris should go up this list. 
I 100% agree with Brad. This is where I had Michael Harris as well. Uh, 297 average, 136 WRC plus, 853 OPS and a 361 Babbitt plus a seven outs above average. The guy can play baseball. I, I love Michael Harris. It sucks that he's on the Braves, but I love Michael Harris, man. Like, he is such a fun player to watch. He's such a good player to watch. He just needs to work on his approach to the plate, and he's going to be a great player for a long time to come. All right. Can I can I intro number four? You got it. I have Byron Buxton, who would be number two if he could stay on the damn field. Byron Buxton, other than Mike Trout, is the most talented center fielder. He's just not healthy. He's never played more than 92 games in a season in the past five years. He played 140 in 2017. Um, and you go look at that year, by the way, the year where he played 140 games, he put up 27 outs above average in center field, which is like probably the best defensive center field season that we've seen on stat cast or defensive season. I know scope had a really high number of second base this year. That's besides the point. Uh, most of his art, this argument again is focusing on his injury history. He's so, so good when he's actually, you know, on the field. And the Twins, I don't have the split in front of me. They're ridiculously better when he's on the field. He's all red in his percentiles, except for expected batting average for some reason. Don't know about that one. But you know what? He steals bases. He hits home runs. He hits for power. He needs to walk a little bit more. Um, But honestly, Byron Buxton is the full package without a healthy body. I mean, yeah, I'm right there with you, actually. Um, Clearly has the best stuff. He has, yeah, he might have the best tools to, in the in the center field department, other than Mike Trout, obviously. Um, I'm gonna do the uh, 162 game average thing again, but since 2020, which is really his breakout, he's had a 162 game average. Keep in mind, he has not done that. Um, of 51 home runs, 33 doubles, and 153 hits. If he plays a full season, and you're getting that production, it, this guy is insane, and he's got some of the best speed we've seen in the last decade. He has got a cannon in center field. And he has somehow already pulled in MVP votes twice in a young injury play career. And he hasn't even played that many games. Uh, keep in mind, he's not even 30 yet. I mean, you kind of, there's a lot of guys that have dealt with injuries in the past. I mean, Aaron Judge being one of them. And then when you get that full season from him, you see what happens. He's now the best player in baseball. Um, can we see something like that with Byron Buxton? I think it's less likely because his injury record clears anything we've ever seen before. Um, but I am hopeful. I think this is absolute ceiling. Um for his health, but his ceiling with that with with good health is number two or number one at least. I really wanted to put Buxton into the top three. I I really looked hard to try and get him into the top three, but I just couldn't justify it. He played ninety two games last year with a two to a two twenty four average. He had a one thirty six WRC plus and eight thirty three OPS. Those are both very very good stats. Um, defense is good. Again, when he is on the field. He is a top three center fielder, but he's not on the field. And I just, I want him to be on the field. I like Byron Bucks and I had him on my fantasy team last year. It's just, he just can't, he just can't stay healthy. And I I don't know what, what the Minnesota twins organization needs to do to get him to stay healthy. I mean, he was on pace for a seven more season. If he played 162 games last year, that's pretty good. Uh, so yeah. you have him at four. Yeah, that's where I had him. All righty. I love the respect for the guy that we have at number three. I think we're on the same page here. The respect and the love of Brandon Nimmo of the New York Mets. Gotta love that guy. He's like, is he the best leadoff hitter in baseball? Like the most pure at bat to start off a game? Yes. Yes, like, he is. I, I, he brings so much value. I'm going to, I'm going to cherry pick some Tom stats here. Okay. Since 2018, the beginning of the season, Brandon Nimmo ranks, ranks sixth and all of baseball and on base percentage sixth. And that's behind probably, I think it's four MVP winners. Uh, he's been above league average every season, except his rookie year, 5.4 war last year, 2022 quality above average center field. His Woba has been elite the past two years, 364, 350 and 342 respectively. And he jumps off the page as a green flag besides health. Uh, and one thing I really liked about his bat of all profile is that he has a great diversity of run values. He hits all types of pitches. I think he only had one type of pitch last season where he had any ounce of negativity to it. And I find that very impressive. And it was a splitter, which he saw 25 of. Yeah, Brennan Nimmo, I mean, he's very underappreciated every single season. I know I know a pretty good uh, franchise that wouldn't underappreciate him, but he chose to go back. It's fine, though. Um, 
doesn't strike out, walks a ton, doesn't chase, doesn't swing and miss. This is a very good quality at bat you get every single game. Not to mention he's also got a very good glove and a very good arm in center field. He's one of the best center. He's one of the best leadoff hitters in baseball, if not the best. And I think people are going to start seeing why. Um, I was just looking at his stats, and he gets hit by a lot of pitches. That's completely irrelevant to our, our argument, but he gets hit by and so many pitches. And he sprints to first base. And they sprints to first base. Love me some Brandon Demos. Debs, what do you got? Well, the Mets were – they had the most hit by pitches last season. So, yeah. I mean, that that's that probably adds to it. But, that's again, 274 average. Right there. Yeah, uh, 274 average, 134, 134 WRC+, plus, 800 OPS and 317 Babbitt. Plays great defense, plays great offense. What more do you want from your leadoff hitter and your center fielder? Hey, now, let's head I mean, in. Tom, you said that he'd be really nice in San Francisco. You know who would also be really nice in San Francisco? Hey, there's a couple Brian guys that would be really good in San Francisco. Oh, man, this guy. Or Aaron Judge. We are stacked oh, that guy too. Well, He'd probably be in right field for them. Yeah. Arson Judge, you need be... your third baseman. We need we need an infield at this point. I mean, we honestly, you see the image that MLB Network Radio put out on Instagram for their top ten. No. Uh, I'll pull it up while you guys introduce number two. Okay, I'll do it. Uh, I mean, I feel like we're all on the same page here. If we're not, then something's wrong with you. Uh, Julio Rodriguez is the uh second second best center fielder. Uh, he batted two eighty four last season, one forty six WRC plus, eight fifty three OPS, three forty five BABIP. Nine outs above average. He needs to work on his approach at the plate, but to put those stats up and have a subpar approach at the plate is incredible. And imagine if he gets a good approach at the plate. What can't he do? Yeah, I mean, I think we saw, we heard this guy's name for a couple of years of how he's supposed to come out and be like this stud. And there was a couple of disappointments along the way. There was Spencer Torkelson. Uh, that's the biggest one that comes to my head. Uh, there's Jared Kelnick, like these big star-studded players that just didn't hit. And then this was the year of like the rookie. If you, I think it, that's a good way to call it. 2022 is the year of the rookie. And Julio Rodriguez effectively replaced Fernando Tatis as the next face of baseball. Like Fernando uh, yeah. Tatis like sold himself, but Julio Rodriguez stepped in and took it. Like it wasn't just handed to him. He was good on all sides of the ball besides contact. Um he has a 284 hitter Stes metric, uh, which is pretty much 300 nowadays. His power was in the 92nd percentile of average exit velocity with 28 home runs. The speed was there with 25 stolen bases and the 98th percentile sprint speed. The glove was there for nine outs above average, and the arm was there in the 96th percentile for arm speed and arm strength. Like, he was a rookie, and he did all that. It's just immediate stardom with this guy. I mean – He's he's one of the first five, like the first first year five tool players since Mike Trout. I mean, can you name a player that's come up and been a five tool player? Like, I mean, you got you got these guys with breakouts like Judge and Alonzo. You know, McNeil had pretty good, but they were all pretty one dimensional. They were all power or contact. What were you gonna say, Brad? Uh, Ichiro. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, he's got great glove, elite speed. You already mentioned everything. He's got a. Positive run value versus every pitch but the splitter. I don't know if you mentioned that, um, which he only saw 1.8% of the time. Um, the only thing stopping him from having a 30-30 season in his rookie year was injuries. I mean, this guy had a 28-25 and season with missing 30 games. Um, I mean, given those 30 games, he's going to he's gonna make that 30-30 cut. Um, and he's going to do it next year. I predict that. Um, I mean, this is a guy that I don't see much regression happening with him. I think His expected stats meet his regular stats. He's got the tools to be a star, and he seems to love the spotlight on him. So uh, he's a guy that will thrive next season. Stevs, you want me to get up to number one? Oh, uh, do you want to? It's Victor Robles, not nah, oh! Mike Trout. Like, come on, like, what are we talking yeah, about? Here? I mean, this he's, isn't the, a he's the best player in baseball. Like, it's yeah. not even a discussion, right? So I mean, again, again, and he dealt with it was the back injury, right? Like he had a he had or a back. Uh, disease or whatever it was yeah and he was he was like they were like yeah he's gonna be sidelined for like probably the rest of the season with this with this back disease and it could hinder him for the rest of his career which it still could right but the guy was back out and playing in like two weeks like he's the best player in baseball what more do you want from him he batted 283 176 wrc plus a 999 ops 323 babbitt the dude in his percentiles is red across the board. Like 
there is not a better player in baseball. I'm sorry, there's just not. He put up six war in 119 games. This is the second time he's ever hit 40 home runs, and he did it in 119 games. Yeah, if you uh, if you average that out to a 162 game average, this is like I, I'm gonna do it really fast. Give, give it's me eight one. wins. So you guys it's keep, eight keep... wins. No, I'm talking about I'm talking about home runs. Hold on. It's 56. 40 over 119. <laughs> um, uh, X he... over one. <laughs> what he went? He hit. Was it seven games? How many games in a row did he hit? It was seven. Was like seven or something like that. It was like, six that, or seven. Nuts. The guy's nuts. And he's playing in Los Angeles. He needs to go to somewhere else. 54. He's playing, he's playing in Anaheim. Um, 54 home runs. I only had one line for Mike Trout, and I said, it's literally him. It's the best player in baseball, and there's nothing you can do about it. I didn't write anything. I just wrote Mike Trout, number one. I I, I mean, because when sure. I, what I do when I when I plan these things out, because I was really struggling with this one, is I cut out little slips of paper, write their names down, and then adjust. I'm a visual guy. I, I didn't really write Mike Trout's name down. I didn't have to um, because he's number one. You know, there's not much you have to say. There's not – we've never seen something like this. In our, I mean, obviously we're young, so this is this is something that we should take advantage of watching because uh, he's not going to be here forever, you know. Um, generational talent. I think he could be one of the best. All right. So we got to enter our top ten. Our one through eight are already set. We kind of got to figure out what we're going to do with nine and ten. So we have Jazz I mean, Chisholm think, getting two tenths. I think nine and, ten, nine and ten is pretty easy, I would say. No? Brad, what do you guys say? Yeah. Jazz Chisholm okay. had two tenth place votes. Mike yep. Yastrzemski had a tenth and a ninth. Kiermaier had a ninth, and McCormick had a ninth. Yaz deserves to be there. I don't know what you were on, Brad. I, yeah. I, I would say I would say Yaz is nine and Jazz is ten. Yes, yeah. Jazz. Yes, yeah. Jazz. All right. Well, you heard it from them. Coming in at number 10, we got Jazz Chisholm. Number nine, yeah, it's not jazz. Number eight, yeah. we got Cedric Mullins. Number seven, Lou Bob, Luis Robert. Number six, Brian Reynolds. Number five, Michael Harris, too. Number four, Byron Buxton. Number three, Brennan Nimmo. Number two, Julio Rodriguez. And number one, the best player in baseball, Mike Trout. Anything surprise you? Mm. Um, yeah, I just I just don't like Jazz Chisholm in the top ten because he's never played center field. But I I mean I I think the the surprises were the inclusion of Chaz McCormick, Kevin Kiermeyer, even talking about guys like Dylan Carlson. I mean, there's a lot of Adam upside Duvall. with these guys, but yeah, and Adam Duvall, obviously. Um, other than that, it's pretty it's pretty close to my list. Um, I'm surprised for the hatred on Brian Reynolds. I know that there's probably some recency bias because he was not as good last season, but I think he still has the, the potential to be a top 20 player in baseball, if not like higher. Yeah. And especially at center field where there's so much potential value. That's true. All right. Center field is one of those positions where we really want to see a breakout of younger talent. We want to see the, the bottom, the floor of center field take its rise in 2023. And it has the potential to do it. We've given names of players that we think are honorable mentions, guys that we could be in our top 10 that could raise the floor and not make this a lackluster bottom position. Uh, the top of this position is fantastic. We have the best player in baseball. We have Julio Rodriguez, the best young player in baseball. There's not much you can't, there's not much to argue about the strengths of the best of center fielders. Thank you all for listening to the 4A Baseball Podcast. We will be back next week with two more episodes. We're going to cap off the outfield for our player rankings and we're going to figure out probably a fantasy draft for our other episode if you want to follow us on social media all links will be in the description below if you want to interact with us at all tiktok twitter probably the best two places to do so we'll be uploading the full length video of this to our youtube page see you all next time on the baseball for a baseball podcast that is peace